Hey everybody, this is Anthony with JFT Trucking and this is JFT TV. I uh, appreciate everybody kind of checking this video out. This video is going to be about how I track all of my loads. And I had a request from some folks here that follow the channel to uh, and ask me about how I go about doing that. And so I told them that I would go ahead and do a video on that. So I'm doing a screen recording for my first time, so forgive me, but I do want to make sure that I put this video out in a way that allows you all to see what I've been doing. And uh, I do track my loads um, on my iPhone and have an iPad here as well, and as well as a uh, laptop at home. And so I use the cloud here, the iCloud here, to track all of my stuff. And that way, if I use my personal device, my handheld, my iPhone, or if I'm on my iPad to view things much easier, or when I go home, I can have it all in the same place and it updates everything. It syncs. Um, um, real time. So it's great to have it on all devices. So I do use the cloud for that. But I've been tracking my loads ever since I opened back in um, April for business. And it's important to me for tracking obvious reasons to make sure that I know if I'm getting paid and to keep track of all the loads I've done. And so I do track things. And I had a file here set up in this folder called desktop. And I go into that. That's my desktop to my laptop, I believe. And there's a folder that I've created, JFT Trucking. And then there I have a bunch of different things here. And for, and for today's video, I'm going to concentrate on one of my favorite sheets that I use all day long. It's called JFT uh, KPI Tracking Sheets. And I click on that there. And just so you know, KPI Tracking Sheets is a term we used in restaurants. It stands for Key Performance Indicators. And these are some of the key performance indicators that I do want to look at. So I got the every month down below here that you can see. And I've gone back here to begin in June. And each month that goes by, I do update the spreadsheet and change the format and input and take out things. Uh, and I make it better and better for me as I go along. But going back to June here, I uh, began tracking these spreadsheets. And in June, the first column I set up in Excel was the pickup date. So I can go back and look at that. And as you can see, you've got June 3rd here it was a pickup, the first pickup on down to June 30th there. But the first pickup was then picked up in Owatonna. I want to know where I'm coming from and where I'm going. So the pickup date was July, was June 3rd. I picked it up in Owatonna. And then my delivery date was June 7th. Uh, so it took, you know, four, four plus days there. And uh, I got to edit there, Phoenix, actually. Let me change that really quick here. Actually, I can't do that while I'm talking, so I'll fix the spelling later. But I dropped off in Phoenix. So I went from Owatonna, Minnesota to Phoenix. And the broker I used for that deal was Cowboy. I do track uh, a multitude of things here, but really important here, I track my deadhead miles it took to get to that load, which for that load was 67 miles from home. And then the load itself was a 1,600-mile run with a total of 1,667 miles for that load. So for that load, uh, the pay was $3,500. And that's a pretty good rate, I think. And... Uh, so I have 3,500 written down there. I, I uh, track what I'm being owed. And then I have a column here for factoring. And my factor rate is 3%. If I have my loads um, being factored through RTS, uh, they take out 3%. If you do want to use RTS, you can hit me up, and I will send you a link to uh, sign up for them. They're a great company. One of the best things, obviously, about factoring is, is that I needed to make sure that I can get the revenues in as quickly as possible into my checking account because as you know fuel is extremely ex expensive I average about 50 cents a mile and so you start adding up all these thousands of miles as you can see they're almost uh, uh, 8,000 miles that month there's four thousand dollars in fuel and you got to pay these things quickly you know your fuels due every time you go in there monthly you got your uh, truck payment your insurance payment my uh, different load boards I use, etc. So money is constantly being owed and going out. And to make sure I get that money within 24 to 48 hours, I do have a factoring company that I use RTS. So that's the column right there, factoring that I track everything on. Uh, and the next column over, I then get a rate per mile. And so for that load, I averaged uh, $2.19, which is really, really good. But that only uh, accounts for the miles that was... Uh, on the on the uh, rate con which is 1600 miles but i actually went 1667 to complete that load so my rate per mile including my deadhead 
goes from two nineteen to two dollars. It's important to really track what you really are making because you are burning fuel, and it is expensive. It does cost. I want to make sure I know what I'm making uh, as a rate per mile, including all of my mileage. So moving on over there, I also uh, set up uh, invoices. I I uh, I have two programs. I use this and I use QuickBooks. And as I mentioned in a previous video, I do upload all my invoices so I know that my revenues that are coming in that are uh, accrued, my account receivables are showing. And then once they get paid, I show them paid. And I can easily go into my QuickBooks and know which invoices are outstanding. But this spreadsheet does much of that as well for those of you who wanted to do it manually. So I created my invoice number. You can do whatever you want to do, but for me, I wanted to have a way of being able to go back throughout the months and hopefully the years and to be able to look up invoices. And the way I came up with for me uh, was based upon these numbers here. And the first set of numbers, the 001, is my truck number. I named my truck number 001. And down the road as I buy more trucks and I get them out there and I get drivers, I will track these, these sheets um, uh, separately for each truck. So this is truck 001 and that first invoice was 0622 which is for June of 2022. And then the dash 01 is the first invoice of June of 2022. So as you can see, that 001 dash 0622 dash 01 indicates that truck 001 in June of 2022 had its first invoice, which is this right here, the information in there. So what I want to also know is I have the dates over here when I left, you know, or went to pick up the load and I dropped it off. But you don't get paid right away that same exact day and I want to know what day I'm getting paid uh, so I can look back and see how long it's taking and that load paid me on June on June 10th and I put down the date that it clears my bank so that was June 10th when that invoice cleared the bank and I have a dispatcher she's awesome for those of you that don't know her she's a gym um, she's got over a decade in this business running a pretty large company in the past and she's helping me get my business up and running and so I pay her 8% of all the loads that we um, take on. So that tells me right there, that load that I got for 3,500, I pay her 8%, which is $280. And then the check mark is so that I know when I write her a check for loads that have cleared, that I know that I paid her. So there's, as you'll see the, in the months coming up here, there's loads that, yet, that, that have yet to be paid. I need to make sure I know which ones to pay her for and have not been paid yet. So that's how I track my loads there as quickly as I could. As you can see, what's really important here, that first month, um, or, or going back in June, I should say, my rate per mile was $1.96 as an average, and that's really, really good. The big problem is I lost $0.50 cents right there. I actually only earned $1.46 per mile because I had over here a total of 2,045 miles that I didn't get paid for. And that happened because I took a load to Jacksonville, Florida, and then I had to get back um, at the end of that month there. And I didn't have the ability to pick up a load that would work out for me to get back to uh, take care of some personal business. And I drove 1,459 miles. So that right there really, really killed me for the month. But so down below here in green, I track all my totals, and my deadhead miles for that month was 2,045. My total miles that I was booked for, for the loads that I took on, were 6,000 miles. When you add both those together, I actually drove 8,045 miles. I generated $11,745 in revenue. My factoring that I had for most of those loads was $334.16. So what's important about that number, one load right there, $1,000, paid me directly with a check. And uh, so that was no issue with that right there. But I will tell you that for $334.16 is a huge peace of mind to have in my checking account, you know, roughly $10,745 within 24 hours. I had that money sitting there. So I didn't have to worry about payments that were coming due, automatic payments from my a truck that I purchased and my insurance that's due on the first and stuff like that. So that's a small price to pay to have the money right away. Now, if I had a lot of money in reserves and was much wealthier, I could save that $300. And that's something down the line I would like to negate as I do grow and scale up. But for $334 for you know almost $11,000, any day I'd pay that. So it really helped me out. Then over here, 
as I mentioned before, the rate per mile that I um, that I booked for was dollar ninety six. Only took in a dollar forty six. Uh, right there, I paid my my dispatcher nine hundred and thirty five dollars and sixty cents. And for me, that's also a blessing, and and it helps me out immensely, uh, mentally really, because she does all the booking. She makes sure that um, I'm getting paid on the loads. When she books a load, she does the carrier packet for me, sets up all the quick pay, uh, all the factoring, and then makes sure that I am paid on time and stuff like that. So, you know, for $900 plus, um, I think it's money well spent, especially as we grow this business. It's uh, someone that's helping me out. The biggest thing about that is like when I'm driving and I've got a load, I'm under a load, I'm going somewhere. You know, oftentimes it gets towards, you know, the middle of the afternoon, late afternoon, and we know that we're dropping off early in the morning. She can already be looking for loads as I'm driving. And that's one of the biggest, biggest incentives that I try to exploit. We try to exploit together is to have these loads booked ahead of time. So her ability to do that while I'm driving just makes a lot of, you know, a lot of sense to me. So that is, in a nutshell, how June went. So the big numbers for me was the 6,000 miles booked, the 2,000 more miles that I drove for a total of 8,000, the money that I took in, and and then my rate per mile, and then including deadhead. So when you go into July, you look here, and there's my loads as well. And over here, I had deadhead miles again, really, really big. Uh, I forget about what happened there, but there's the load miles that I had that I booked for, 7,342. Total miles driven for the month was almost 9,700. I increased my revenues to $16,160. And as you can see, I actually increased my rate per mile to $2.20, which is really good, but I lost, once again, 57 cents per mile because of the additional 2,000 plus miles that I drove. So it's really important to reduce those miles because if I did not drive those miles, um, you know, you can figure at least half of that is, you know, $1,150 I spent for fuel. So I would have taken home another $1,100 or I spent that in driving those excess miles. So really important not to do that. Once again, showing that she's been paid for all those loads and stuff. When you go into this current month here, I changed it and I put my very first column here I now have headed as what the invoice number is because it seems like now that as we're looking at things in the banking and with my bookkeeper and stuff like that, that the first question everyone's always asking me is, hey, what was the invoice number? So what's matching up across all the systems, you know, my QuickBooks, my spreadsheets and whatnot is that invoice number. So I put that to the first column now. Next is, once again, my pickup date where I picked it up from, the delivery date, where I drove it to, who the broker was, and now I changed things again. I added a payee because I found myself getting confused that the broker isn't always the one paying me because these loads are either factored through RTS, my company, or they're being um, done through quick pay, and we're getting better at writing those people in. So like right now, I've got a question on one of my loads right there. I'm gonna be getting a hold of actually up here Yellow Diamond didn't pay the $2,550. They only paid $2,500. So we're in the process of looking that up. And I know it's Yellow Diamond and they paid through RTS. RTS paid me. So I'm working with those people to make sure I get the additional $50. But what's really nice about this month is I've made a concerted effort and listened to my dispatcher who has 10 plus years of experience to reduce my deadhead miles. Patience. Patience is key not having to always get up and move because I don't have anything right away. So right now, through the first 2,666 miles that I've driven in the three trips, I've only moved 202 additional miles deadhead. So right there, my deadhead is really, really low, and I'm really working hard. I'm making sure that I can low, you know, keep that as low as possible for the entire month and see if I can increase. I know I will, my bottom line profitability. So right there, showing the loads that I've earned, the money that I'm earning, uh, there is the money, $76.50 paid for factoring so far, and I booked my loads. My average load rate per mile is $1.97, which is really still good in this uh, economy and with all the truck drivers out there and all the low rates. So I'm doing really good getting good rates. And then right now, because of the low deadhead miles, I'm averaging $1.83. So I'm only giving up $0.14 cents a mile for all these miles I've driven to go pick them up, which is really, really nice. 
I've also added down here an odometer reading at the beginning of the month, and I'll put one at the, at the end of the month because there is some incidental driving that I do, whether I go to Walmart or I go to freight tools to pick up stuff or whatever it is, I'm getting the truck washed, and I really want to get a really, really hard number for miles driven for the month and my actual rate per mile. So there you go. I hope this video was beneficial for you. I know there's been some questions about how do you track your your revenues and, exp and, um, and your loads, and that is how I do it. If you do have any questions about that, please leave it in the comments below um, on this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. I will be doing some more videos because I'm learning how to do screen sharing. I know I talked about revenues and stuff like that, but I will talk more about that in detail later. But for those of you that asked for it, I hope you um, you found what you're looking for. If you aren't that good at Excel, ask a friend to help out. There are, you know, you can go online and look up um, uh, samples, templates on stuff and how to track things. And you can set one up simply for yourself. But this is what I, what I do every day. She uploads this as we book the loads and I fill in some numbers. She fills in some numbers and throughout the days and the weeks, these are the forms that we're showing and keeping track of all of our loads. So it's working really, really good for me. I think it'll work really, really good for you. So once again, having said everything I've said, I want to wish you guys a great week. And if you want to have any other videos, or any other topics, please let me know in the comments. And I hope you guys have a great day. So now I'm going to turn the video off. Thank you.